Sorry students of Benefit Group of Schools, trust you people are doing fine and all you are keeping safe. This is another episode from Benefit e-learning platform. Today being the 14th day of July 2020, Literature English SS1. You know, last week we did look at uh, the element of poetry, where we looked at uh, the image and imaginary. We were able to run down through some of their you know, items that has to do with the uh, element of poetry. And I told you we'll be looking at uh, the, the aspect of rhyme and sound. We'll just discuss it very briefly before we consider today's uh, topic. When you say rhyme, what is a rhyme? A rhyme is a repeated, you know, a repeated sound that uh, you give, a repeated language of sound that you get when writing a poetry. Okay? You know, many a times you begin to say, you love my rhyme, you know, because it sees coming and going, the rise and the fall tone of a sound is known as what? Rhyme. Then the other one is the sound. What is a sound? In as much as poetry is to be read out loud or to be uh, written and pronounced out loud, many a times it is also good for us to have clear sound in poetry. Let's say for example, I have a poem that I want to recite. I'm not going to be reciting my poem using a voice that will not be audible, okay? So sounds in poetry is what it's sacrosanct when it comes to terms of poetry. It gives meaning to the poem, it gives sense to the poem, and it gives uh, pleasure to the reader. Then for today, we'll be looking at the classification of poetry. I've already drafted some certain things on the board that poem are classified into the following categories. Are we together? The very first one we have here is the elegy. Okay, as a literature student, you need to be familiar with these words. Okay, so I'll just be discussing them as I've drafted it on the board. Elegy, it is a type of ly lyrical poem that expresses sadness for someone who has died. Okay, as a good poet, you should be able to know how to write from nonsense to sense. And you're able to also know how to write from when one is happy to when one is sad. Are we together? So poetry is all a comparison. It's all a comparison. It is not pinned down to a particular aspect. I know students will be need to say, ah, why are you discussing things that has to do with the dead? No, it's not that we are discussing things that has to do with the dead, but it's another aspect of poetry that we need to know. Okay? Elegy. It is a type of lyrical poem that expresses sadness. A loved one dies and you want to express your grief. You want to express your sadness. Okay? That period of you, you know, jotting down something. Oh, how I wish it never happened. How I wish you never left this world. Okay? The last time I met you was, I never knew it's going to be the last time you say goodbye. Such a word is referred to as what? Elegy when it is written in a poem pattern. Okay? It expresses sadness, it expresses uh, uh, the feeling of grief. Okay? Mind you, every one of us is going to die someday, and every one of us must have, in one way or the other, lost a loved one. Okay? So, in as much as you want to express such a sadness, not everybody expresses their feelings through crying. Some expresses it through writing. Like me, if I want to express my feelings, I'd rather just pick a barrel and a paper and I start writing. So if I am writing something for the dead, I am writing, what I'm writing is known as what? Elegy. Okay? The number two here is dead. It is a song of lamentation. Okay? Song on the occasion of someone's death. It is different from elegy because it is shorter and usually written to be a song. Now, mind you, students, elegy is written to be to be read out. Why this dead is a song? All right, you're familiar with some songs like "Till We Meet, Till We Meet Again." God be with you till we meet again. That's a dead. Are we together? That is a song form of lamentation. You are also expressing 
your grief, your feelings, your 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 in fact your discomfort through the song. Why is another person expressing it through writing? So if you are expressing it through writing in a point form, that's elegy. But if it's a song format, it is what? A dirge. Hope I'm communicating. So it is different. Please take note of the two. You could say it in your exam. Uh, both of them talks about the dead, but one is a written form and one the other one is in what? A singing format. The elegy is in the written form in the poem, while the dead have to be what? In the song format. The normal theory, we believe that the dramatic poetry, it involves the use of character, dialogue, and action. If not because of this COVID-19 pandemic, by now, I like as well, we should be doing our normal class, you know, drama. Okay? Our practical class drama. That kind of a drama that has to involve characters. Okay? Somebody acting as the father, somebody acting as the mother, somebody acting as the child, somebody acting as a principal, somebody acting as an old man, they refer to as what? The characters. Okay? Then when this character comes together, what do they do? The dialogue. Okay? Call me into a Ito, ma, you know, she's running down. That process of calling her and that process of her responding to you is known as what? A dialogue. Okay? So, in a dramatic poetry, if you're writing a kind of a poem, okay, what comes to your mind? What comes to the forefront of your mindset is very simple. The very first thing that comes to your mind is this I am acting, I am, I mean, I'm writing an acting scene. Okay? In that scene, I need the character. We need to dialogue and you hear the word action. Okay? Action. Action simply means get started. Hot means probably what you are acting is not in line with what I've taught you. I will hurt you halfway. That's what it means. So, that is another format of writing a poetry. I can write a poem in a, in a dramatic style. Okay? The normal form we have the Ode. Okay, the body, it is a long meditative, take note, a long meditative and lyrical poem, serious in subject, decorous in style, addressed to some person's object or an abstract noun within personified quality. So now this body, what is it all about? I am writing a long poem, okay, but when I'm writing the poem, it, it has to do with the poem that has bearing either to me as a subject or to some other persons, okay, that uh, happens to be what? The abstract now. Now, the point is this. I have been haunted before now. Probably emotionally, I have been unstable. Somebody broke my heart, in quotes. Let me use that word. Now, I want to bring my expression into writing. I'll begin to write from how we started to what really happened that led to the collapse. Trust us, it's going to be a very long episode, isn't it? So why I'm writing it, I am pouring out my heart. I did told you before we started the other time that writing has to do with your creativity. You don't jump into writing. A very any good writer that you see today is a critical thinker. Okay? If you cannot think, you cannot make use of your cognitive analysis, there is no point in your writing. Okay? Because your writings is a product of how you reason. Okay? Now they're telling us that oh, there has to be towards long meditative and lyrical poem. As it is long, as it is meditative, it is lyrical. Okay? What is lyrics? I am trying to make sure I told you that. Rhyme has to do with what? The rise and fall of a sound. Okay? A repeated uh, sound that gives meaning to what you're writing. So that's also what a lyrical poem is talking about. Okay? Then it's addressed to someone. It could be you I'm writing about. It could be an object. Okay? It could be an abstract now. For example, there are some poets that specializes on writing about nature. That's nature. It's an object. Oh, Mother Africa, why did you leave us in this country to suffer? 
Okay? That's what an Odeh and the recapture a dead person. Take notes. I know when I see dead person, you say, oh, I'll come again with the dead. Listen, the difference between energy, dead, and what? Ephita. Okay? This Ephita, you must have seen it in a passage. When you go to the tomb, what is the tomb? The grave of anybody, any of your loved one. You will see some persons who like to write inscription on the, on, on, the, on, on the head of the tomb, okay, or on the head of the grave. You bury the person, they have to build it out. On the head of the grave, you begin to say, Pa James, 1915 to 2010, okay? That inscription is known as what? Ephita. And why did they start to write that? They could still decide to write one or two, you know, words to, to, to describe a person. What a, you know, what an icon, okay? Or the icon has fallen. When you see such things on the grave, you know that your uncle does, does not really mean that we have exhausted the classification of poetry. But because this platform is a platform that we cannot really touch, so I want you to pick your textbook read up classification of poetry, you will begin to see more, okay? In as much as I am discussing it with you in this platform, you begin to comprehend what I am saying. So till I come your way, same time next week, by the grace of Almighty God, remain ever blessed and stay safe.